Welcome to the Manifestation Bay podcast. My name is Katherine Zinkina, and I'm a manifestation expert, master mindset coach, and multiple seven-figure entrepreneur. I'm obsessed with helping you achieve everything that you once thought was impossible. If you're looking to massively up-level your life, your finances, your relationships, your productivity and success, then you have come to the right place. My goal in this podcast is to help you see the infinite potential within yourself to be, do, and have anything that your heart desires. Think of this podcast as your weekly dose of mindset development to help you maximize who you are and where you're going. Leave it to me to provide you with the tools, the resources, the strategies, and teachings that you need to manifest a reality wilder than your wildest dreams. I know we're about to have so much fun together, so thank you so much for pushing play today, and now let's begin. Hello, my beautiful souls, and welcome back to another episode of the Manifestation Bay podcast. Guess what? Arizona edition, because I'm officially moved into my new home (laughs) that I've been manifesting for so long, and let me just tell you, my first night in this home is the inspiration behind this podcast episode. So I want to break down what it feels like for the manifestation, what it feels like when the manifestation finally manifests. But before I get into what I have planned for today's episode, I have a fun little announcement that I think will just be so dandy to try out together. You ready for this? So I feel very inspired by people asking me questions. This is me living my human design, which if you're not familiar with human design, just a couple episodes ago, I brought on human design expert, Erin Claire Jones, who creates these beautiful blueprint guides for anyone who wants to purchase them. And in the podcast episode, she breaks down my human design type, my human design strategy, my human design authority, and all these little details, as well as like a mixture of all the possibilities of what you could be. And in the episode, if you haven't heard of it, if you haven't heard it, you'll know that I'm a generator. I'm a 2-4 sacral generator, and generator's strategy is to respond. And what better way for me to run my life and business than to respond to questions? (laughs) I literally come up with the best content when I'm answering a direct question. And I have things that fly at me at a million miles per hour, and it's hard to keep track sometimes. And I'll have my team who regularly sends me um, DMs that I get or emails that I get or, or, you know, any sort of podcast suggestions that come through. And I always kind of put them on the back burner. If it's a good idea, you know, I'll do something with it right away. But typically I like forget what the question is and then I'm creating content and I'm like, why am I not feeling so inspired? It's because nothing's really inspiring the podcast. Nothing's really inspiring inspiring the episode. Nothing is really driving the energy for it. And I need to respond to something to manifest it into form. So I thought, what cooler way to activate my human design than to integrate a way that you could send me a voice note that I could feature on the podcast. So literally I will play your voice and then I will answer your question. And that will be a topic for an episode um, of just me answering your question. And literally all my content is inspired by your questions anyway. So things I see on social media, things that I answer in the comments section, things that I get, you know, I love to do my Q and A's when I travel. That's one of my favorite things to do. Um, I was at a mastermind speaking this week and I told the host, my really good friend, James Wedmore, like I'm really busy that week, but yes, I will come speak because I love you and I love your group of people, but do me one favor, make it a Q and A 
and I am there. Like I live for Q and A's. So he had me on the mic for two hours and I had so much fun. So I was like, I want to bring this to the podcast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a link in the show notes and in the show notes, you will see a form. And basically it's a place for you to go to, well, you'll just follow the instructions. Okay. It'll lead you to a place where you can literally record a voice note. And then um, you can either email it to us or you could submit it via this form. It makes it super easy. And then I will sift through these on a regular basis. And then should I feel inspired to answer your question, I will feature you on the podcast. Um, And yeah, I'll answer your question. So I figured that would be really fun. Okay. Now, now that my announcement is done, (laughs) let's get into the meat and potatoes. So this episode is, you know, I often get asked by people like, what does it feel like when your desire is finally here? Like, what does it feel like when you finally manifested that thing that you've wanted for so long? Can you describe that feeling? And I was thinking, you know, I think about that a lot. And today I woke up this morning and because I spent the last night, you know, in my house here in Scottsdale And finally being here in this home just made so many things click for me. And I've realized why this manifestation took so long. And I could finally describe in my own weird way of what it feels like to finally get what you want. And I want to inspire you energetically, like have an energy that you can tap into from an experience that I'm sure you've had before. I'll get into that in just a second, where when you are on your journey of manifestation, you know what frequency you'll be tapping into because by tapping into that frequency, that's the frequency you're vibrating at. And so therefore life is going to reflect that frequency. So, you know, waking up this morning, I just felt the most immense peace. I can't just, I I mean, that's the best way I could describe it to you. It was like so many things clicked for me around why this manifestation took so long. It was always supposed to be this house. Like I can't describe it in any other way than like energetically, it feels so right. It was always supposed to be in this timing. It took so long, but there's something about it being fall right now that I was tuning into, like fall equals harvest. So of course we move in in the fall. Of course it feels like this beautiful, bountiful harvest period of like, oh, finally, now I can just maximize and amplify this energy. It doesn't feel like there's this void anymore around me not having my sanctuary right? It just couldn't be more divine. Like walking through this house, even though there's literally no furniture, (laughs) we gave up, actually, we gave up most of the furniture that we had to my house manager, who is an immigrant. She immigrated to the United States about a year and a half ago, or yeah, about a year and a half ago. And she doesn't have very much furniture still. We hired her in Las Vegas, at our temporary home in Las Vegas, we hired her and we just fell in love with her. We're like, sorry, um, like it or not, you're, you're stuck with us. And, you know, of course, you know, we don't actually mean that. Like, of course she has a choice, but you know what I mean? Like we wanted to keep her. And so we convinced her to come to Scottsdale. I don't know how we did it, but apparently she likes our family as much as we love her. (laughs) And so she moved to Scottsdale as well. And so most of our belongings went to her. And then with this new home, because it's the biggest house I've ever lived in, um, there are so many rooms, there's so many spaces. And so we needed a ton of furniture, but we are sleeping on our mattress on the floor because we don't have our bed frame and, you know, furniture and their lead times and God, it just takes forever. Like I'm just okay with this house being kind of bare until January ish because a lot of stuff is coming in December, but even in the way that it is right now in this state, I'm like, yes, this energy is exactly what I've been looking for. Like it couldn't have been 
any other home. And I've been through so many houses. I've seen so many houses and, you know, just energetically tuning into houses from the internet. And it's this specific feeling that I was looking for. And as a non-specific manifester, I manifest through feelings. Feelings are very important to me. And I always know that something is it based on how it feels. So typically, my manifestations don't look exactly how I imagine them visually. But feelings-wise, it's like, yep, this or something better. And of course, visually, it does end up, you know, so much better than I expected, but it's not exactly what I expected because as a non-specific manifester, I'm here more so to tune into feelings, which this is another human design terminology, by the way, if you're like, what does that mean? Non-specific versus specific. And this house is just it. And I've realized that through all of the lessons through all of the fears that I had to clear living here, through all of the ups and downs, through all of the twists and turns. And if you are a student of the manifestation reset, I literally documented this manifestation journey in the manifestation reset and actually manifested this house through the manifestation reset. So if you need a program that like works, trust me, it worked (laughs) for me with this house. Like it's insane. But I really documented like all the specific fears I had to clear and how I knew what my blockages were and everything like that. But I just know that I would not have the level of, of appreciation that I have right now. I'm like so high off of gratitude and off of appreciation. And I have all of these endorphins that are just running through my veins right now. Like this relief, this gratitude, the peace I feel right now, I would not have felt this in any other way. Like sometimes, like I I think about, you know, sometimes we want things so quickly and easily and there's nothing wrong with you know, manifestation coming about quickly and easily. There's plenty of them that come quickly and easily. But I often ask myself in moments when things take longer than I expect, like, would I have appreciated it as much as I do if it was quick and easy, right? And I feel like the universe really brought me through the law of polarity, which had me experience every single version of what I didn't want so that I could have the polarity of what I didn't want and get super duper clear and know exactly with precise clarity what I did want. And let me tell you, I got clarity like you wouldn't believe through this process. (laughs) Like it's, it was insane. When I woke up this morning, I specifically tuned into how I felt waking up in my dream home because I wanted to document a podcast, like I said, sharing what it feels like exactly, precisely when you finally manifest what you want. Like what is that feeling that we're all tuning into that we must embody in order to get what we want, right? And this high that I feel on the other side of the manifestation, can I put this into words? Can I come up with a metaphor? Can I somehow package it into a podcast so people understand? Can I express it in a way where others can tune in, where others can borrow that energy and know what to expect once the manifestations come through? So that's where I realized how I feel right now is how I feel after an orgasm. (laughs) Yes, we're going to go there. I just went there. Manifestation is literally like an orgasm, you guys. The more I thought of it, I'm like, yeah, (laughs) like a long, especially if it takes a long time, a long awaited, oh, so patiently awaited release right? That release after all of this tension and buildup sustained over time. Like, is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? Oh my God, it's happening. Wait, no, it's not happening anymore. Oh my God, it's going to happen. Ha ha, right? That kind of orgasm. So hear me out. Here's how I see it. Having the desire is like, you know, the moment that you decide, yes, this is what I want. Think of it as like that initial arousal stage where 
you get excited about the potential of where things are going and expectations begin to build. And now you want nothing more than the pleasure that you know you're going to feel. And then the journey of the buildup, right, towards the orgasm is the journey of manifestation. You have steep ups, you have steep downs, you have plateaus, you get close, you get further away. And maybe I'm more specifically tuning into the female orgasm too. So (laughs) this is definitely more of the female orgasm. You get further away, you think it's about to happen, and then it doesn't, and then you get frustrated. And then you know that frustration isn't going going to get you any closer. So you relax and then you realize, oh my God, the more I relax, the closer I get and the better it feels and the more pleasure you're able to maximize, the more your capacity for pleasure grows until it happens. The moment is there and all of that tension just explodes in fireworks. It's the grand finale. It's the grand event where you're like, holy shit, it's here and it's better than I imagined. I mean, hopefully (laughs) the orgasm sense it is. But in the manifestation sense, like I find it so often, it's so much better than you imagine. And then that feeling right after, as you lay there, as you reminisce, as your body just pulsates with endorphins and you feel this energetic high, like a runner's high, where you feel relaxed yet so clear and relieved and at peace and just oh so good right where you are is what it feels like to finally get what you want. It's where you're no longer worried about if it's coming or not because it's here like and you're living it and you're having it now there's no thoughts about the future there's no thoughts about the past it's very like you're very in the present that's how I felt when I woke up this morning that's how I feel post-orgasm too like you just feel so in the now and now is all there is and now is all that matters and that's just how I feel right now in this home Like, and that's what I will forever remind myself of the next manifestation and the next manifestation and all my manifestations. Since manifesting your desire is about tuning into the frequency of already having it, I'm going to remind myself of the post orgasmic state. (laughs) Like, this is the energy I'm forever tuning into. I'm going to ask myself, like, who is the version of Catherine? who's on the other side of all of that tension and pressure and buildup? Who is the version of Catherine who's laying there in bed, high off endorphins, completely clear, completely relaxed, not a care in the world, with this deep knowing and understanding that right now in this moment, all is well. And that's all that matters. The journey on the way there could be a fucking roller coaster and think about how many orgasms or journeys to orgasm you've had that have been or uh, total roller coasters, right? And total journeys where there's ups and downs and peaks and valleys and plateaus and speed ups and slowdowns. But eventually, inevitably, at some point, no matter how long it takes or how many tries it takes, the big O comes. Just like the manifestation comes. (laughs) So for the next time you have a desire in mind, you want to manifest a dream home, the dream body, a baby, money, a big career move, new clients, a partner, think about the state of mind post-orgasm and channel that shit because that's what it's going to feel like, you know, at least in my experience. (laughs) And that's all I have for you today. That's all that wanted to flow through me. Make sure you send me a voice note. I literally want to have your questions. Like I want to start doing this. I feel like this will be such a fun way to end the year, start the new year. I feel like it'd be such a fun podcast trend for us to get going. So submit your questions. I'll drop them in the show notes. Again, I so appreciate your reviews. They take like three seconds to do. And I just want to let you know, like those three seconds that you invest in leaving a review for this podcast makes such a difference. 
um, in getting this podcast out there and growing this podcast. And I really have fun with this. Like you guys, it's nighttime. Like I just put my baby down and typically in the evenings, the last thing I want to do is work. But lately I've been podcasting at night and it's clearly something that I truly enjoy. So thank you so much for listening and I will catch you in the next episode. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. If you absolutely loved what you heard today, be sure to share it with me by leaving a review on iTunes so that I can keep the good stuff coming your way. If you aren't already following me on social media, come soak up the extra inspiration on Instagram by following at Manifestation Babe or visiting my website at manifestationbabe.com. I love and adore you so much and can't wait to connect with you in the next episode. In the meantime, go out there and manifest some magic.